Hello, my name is Stefano Catena and I would like to introduce the paper Real-Time Algorithmic Timbala Specialization, Compositional Techniques and Approaches. This work is based on experimentation with timbral specialization and the formalization of techniques for its control. The concept of speciality has been taken into consideration in the compositional practice since between the 10th and 14th century in the vocal music and elaborated with the tradition of polychoral music. Even during the classical period, some works actively used the special component of sound, for example in works from Mozart and later with composers like Mahler and Ives. But it is only with the introduction of the loudspeaker that speciality becomes a fundamental aspect of musical production, with some prominent composers such as Karl Heinz Stockhausen who take great advantage from it. In recent years, with the greater accessibility and evolution of specialization techniques, several new concepts regarding speciality have been introduced in the compositional practice. In our case, the concept of audio parity is investigated. A compositional technique is audioperous when the musical data originates from sound, for example in Messiaen's transcription of singing birds. These techniques define a projection between a source sound material and an outgoing musical organization. Self-audioperous techniques, similarly, are composition modes in which the musical data is extrapolated from the original source itself. And of course, there are several non-audioperous techniques, for example, total serialism. Timbral specialization involves the deconstruction of sound into spectral bands by means of several bandpass filters with different central frequencies, allowing for the compositional processes to determine how the sound will be spatially distributed for each part of the spectrum. This process is similar to typical FFT synthesis and resynthesis, and it is between the deconstruction and reconstruction processes that the specialization of the individual band is performed. However, although the concept of splitting the sound into various frequency bands with bandpass filter is by itself straightforward, it poses several questions of compositional interest that may completely change a resulting spatial scene. How many frequency bands should be used? Which center frequency for each bandpass filter? And why? In this case, four different frequency sets have been used. The first frequency set are the preferred octave frequency bands according to the ISO standards. The second are the frequencies from the random source surge resonant equalizer. The third frequency set represents a logarithmic scale. And the fourth frequency set are from an API 560 graphic equalizer. The number of used frequency bands has a strong impact on the overall experience. The third frequency set, for example, only has four spectral bands, is more focused and its particular spectral regions are highly localized, while the other frequency sets are more immersive and seem to be a more coherent group. However, different frequency sets can be used depending on the compositional goal and possibly on the incoming audio spectrum morphology. Nowadays, many specialization systems and techniques are still mixer-oriented. This is because many masterpieces of acousmatic music and electroacoustic music were composed for audio systems controlled by a mixer. The history of electronic music interpretation regarding space is strongly related with the sound space aesthetics developed in these systems. But the creation of several new technologies and techniques for controlling specialization has changed the way composers approach to this parameter. The central point of specialization is, regardless of the technology used, the control of spatial environments attributes. The considered attributes are going to be the geometrical coordinates in a 2D plane X and Y representing back, front, left and right positions, and a distance from the listener or D attribute. Each of these parameters will be applied for every frequency band of the timbral specialization process. In the time domain, noise can be defined as a sound in which the amplitude changes with a degree of randomness. By using noise in conjunction with tools like a sample and hold is a very effective way in generating random sequences. This technique is very useful also to create random functions and fluctuations for every x, y and d parameter in each spectral band. Even more interesting is controlling the sample rate of the sample and hold or nesting noise function into one another to add unpredictability. This technique is non-audioporous. 
The fast Fourier transform, or FFT, inspects the frequency content of a signal and can be extremely useful for real-time audio analysis or frequency domain sound processing. By using this data, it is possible to spectrally analyze sound, extrapolating some of its intrinsic characteristics. These attributes can be used compositionally in our spatial context by mapping them to the relevant values. In this context, three different instantaneous spectral descriptors are used. Spectral centroid, the weighted mean frequency or the center of mass of the spectrum. It can be useful as an indicator of the perceptual brightness of an audio signal. Spectrum roll of point, the frequency below which lies the 90-95% of the signal energy. This somewhat indicates the harmonic-noise cutting frequency. And the spectral flatness, it measures the noisiness or sinusoidality of the spectrum or parts of it. These descriptors act as controllers for random walks, also called the Brownian motions. These Brownian motion functions influence the X, Y and D parameters, changing the spatial environment dynamically. This technique, in contrast with the previous, is a self-audioporous because it is the audio data itself that drives its own spatialization. The audio snapshot is yet another audioporous technique that involves sampling into a buffer a rather small snippet of sound, using this data to drive the specialization. This technique is actually self-audioporous, because the sound being recorded is indeed from the source itself. The basic idea is to use an interpolating buffer player set to very low playback rates in order to read data. Furthermore, once the buffer has been filled, typical DSP operation can be applied to the recorded data. For example, modulating the signal with sub-audio or audio generators with appropriate parameters can yield interesting and extreme results. All the software was implemented in the SuperCollider environment, which features an object-oriented programming language that controls a powerful audio synthesis server. The use of an audio-dedicated programming language is particularly fitting because it comes preloaded with algorithms and unit generators that can be easily integrated in the workflow. Moreover, the SuperCollider community provides a series of free classes and add-ons that dramatically extend the capabilities of both the language and the synthesis server. One of these free plugins has been used to implement the binaural spatial rendering, the Ambisonics Toolkit or ATK, and more precisely the FOA or First Order Ambisonics. It is important to mention that the SuperCollider architecture is based on the dualism between a language called SCLang and the server called SCSynth. Many processes can be implemented within both the interpreted language or the synthesis server. The techniques and approaches presented here have been implemented server-side. In other words, most of the functions such as noise generators, oscillators, FFT analysis, etc. are specific unit generators that are allocated and managed dynamically on SCSynth. In conclusion, timbre specialization is a signal processing technique that has a great potential for creating rich and fascinating spatial textures, but it can be also viewed as a tool for composing space and effectively considering it a part of the compositional workflow. Together with algorithmic techniques for the control of the spatial environment, it is possible to automate the set of attributes that define such virtual space. Furthermore, the introduced concept of self-audio parity adds another layer of complexity and coherence to the whole specialization process. These techniques and approaches can be useful in various musical contexts, live specialization of electroacoustic music, reinterpretation of fixed media composition, or as a standalone tool for spatial composition and for the integration of space in a composer's workflow, for example. The techniques described here are from the compositional view of the author and are to be considered as a starting point for further experimentation. The next steps will involve the development of a framework for easily switching between techniques in real time, the inclusion of the height attribute in the spatialization process, the implementation of a GUI for visual feedback, the integration of machine learning techniques for intelligent specialization, and the creation of a set of hardware tools for the performative control of the spatial textures. Thanks for listening!